Let's talk first. Marco Anatovic. Yesterday, it was all systems go. United appeared to be signing him. And now they've pulled out of that deal. What's your understanding of that situation just now? Well, the situation is, you know, they, they have pulled out of the deal because, because the sites in the fact that Bologna wanted more than United were prepared to offer. I think £7 million was the, the offer that United were prepared to make. But I think the reality is that United have been absolutely stunned by the backlash from supporters and from anyone connected with the club, really, because it, it was just a, a very much of a surprise move to go for Arnautovic, 33 years old, spent the last two or three years in China before he went to Italy. And also there's been incidents of, you know, unsavoury incidents with, with Arnautovic, uh, alleged racism during the Austria game against the North Macedonia a couple of years ago. So the United fans just in general just didn't want Arnautovic to be at the club. But I think it just shows that United's recruitment strategies all over the place that they're even considering a player of, of Arnautovic's calibre. So, no Arnautovic, but Adrian Rabio from Juventus looks like it will happen. What's your take on that and, and what impact do you think that will have on any potential pursuit of Barcelona's Frankie de Jong? Yeah, I mean, Rabio is, is something that they'll probably get done. I'm not saying it's going to be a good deal. I think that Rabio is, is a player that I'm not quite sure suited to the Premier League, both in terms of his playing ability and his kind of demeanour. I don't think his body language is, is particularly great. And considering that United have got an issue at the minute with fans not, want, not believing their players are are playing to the best of their abilities. I think Rabiot needs to hit the ground running, but it's a deal that will get done. In the sense of, of De Jong, let's be honest, United need more than one midfielder, so they're still in for De Jong, but Rabiot is, is just stocking up where they need extra quality. I don't think that Tomane and Fred are good enough. I think Rabiot, if anything, he does have top-level experience of you know playing the Champions League, playing internationally with France. So in terms of quality, yes, he will add something, but I don't think he's the right guy for the for the club at the moment, but it doesn't affect how they're looking at the De Jong deal. De Jong is somebody they still want to get in. And that, that, that is one that's kind of held up at the moment with United not quite knowing what Barcelona mean, what they want. Right from the outset of this, of this transfer saga that it's become, United haven't quite trusted Barcelona. They're, they're getting one message from Barcelona privately, and then Barcelona, you know, Joan Laporta going into the media, the local media in Spain, in, in Barcelona, and for the fans, they're saying something different. So it's a trust thing with United, but I do think that they do believe that De Jong wants to come. But as we know, there's a lot of other issues involved, such as finance and, and whether De Jong is prepared to, to leave a Champions League club like Barcelona. Mark, it's clear all is not right at Manchester United. Can you put your finger on how and why we've got to this point? Well, I think it, the one common thread through the last 10 years of the club's decline has been the Glazer family. And the Glazers, for me, are, are the problem. And, you know, they've spent a lot of money. You can't deny that they've spent a lot of money, but they've wasted a lot of money. And for me, I think right now, they no longer have the money to invest that they need to invest. They don't have the expertise either. They don't have the ability to appoint the best people in the key position. Liverpool have done that. You know, Liverpool don't have the, the, the financial might that United do commercially, but Liverpool have, have got smart owners who've, who've made smart appointments. And that's what has been the key to their success. And they let them get on with it. The Glazers still hold United transfer dealings and everything else that goes on in, in the palm of their hands. So for me, it gets back to the Glazers. They lack the finances, they lack the expertise, but they also lack the ambition. You've got to look at Old Trafford right now to realise that the club has been standing still, if not in decline, for the last 10, 15 years. And it's down to them. Everything else comes from that. It feeds from the Glazers. Now, Eric Ten Hag, for me, has got no chance because he's working for a club that cannot buy the players they need. If the money was there... Richard Arnold said about a month ago and he was speaking to fans in a pub, as I think we can all remember, the money's there for the manager. If the money was there for the manager, they would not be looking at Adrian Rabiot and Mark Arnautovic at the stage of the window. They'd have got the deals done. So that tells you what the parameters that they put on the transfer dealings that the people like John Murta, Darren Fletcher and even Richard Arnold have to work to. So it stems from the Glazers. And while the Glazers are there, I don't think United can compete. They can't be as bad as last year because they were awful last year. I think a lot of the players have to improve and, and kind of focus again. But ultimately, the reason why the club are where they are is because the Glazers haven't invested properly and haven't made the right appointments. Mark, you mentioned the Glazers there. Opposing fans will say, look, Manchester United have spent... Four billion, sorry, four billion, half a billion pounds on players over the last four seasons. So, what would your response be to that? They have spent it, but they wasted it. And one thing that Man United show is that having a lot of money doesn't mean you can be successful. It also involves being astute. I look at Man City; they spent a lot of money, but they've not wasted it. They've made really good signings. Liverpool the same. 
you know, even even Tottenham now looking like they're, they're finally getting an idea what what to do in the transfer market. Chelsea have been the same over the years under Abramovich. They make astute signings and they have the right people doing it. United have just wasted so much money. I mean, we can talk about Paul Pogba, Lukaku. You know, at least they did something. But people like Di Maria, Alexis Sanchez, Rodrigo Falcao. I mean, the list goes on. For the last ten years, they've made some awful signings, and I can't think of any signings that have joined United in the last ten years that have become better players and become more valuable players. You could argue that maybe Bruno Fernandes has been the one player that has increased his value at United since he arrived. But that's debatable. So United aren't identifying the right players. They're spending a lot of money on players where they panic by. Rafael Varane is a classic case. They didn't need to spend that money on Varane. Liverpool spent less on Ibrahim and Canate. Which is the long-term buy? Which is the sensible buy? Canate. So United invest a lot of money, but they waste it. And that is the problem that the Glazers don't quite know the value of the money that they're spending or wasting. I think Ed Woodward going is a, is a good thing because I think Ed was part of the problem. But they still haven't got the right people in place to say, let's not spend £40 million on this player. Let's spend £10 on this player because in two years' time, it would be worth £40 million. They haven't got those people at the club. And until they get those people, they're not going to progress.